So the FCC has repealed its own net neutrality rules that it installed in 2015 under Chairman Tom Wheeler and the Democratic Party majority. Now that there's a Republican Party majority on the FCC, they have reversed those rules because that's how Washington goes these days, apparently. You have a part, you have an FCC with three Democrat, uh, Democrat appointments and two Republican appointments uh, implementing the strong net neutrality rules in 2015 in a purely partisan vote. Then you have a Republican FCC 3 to 2 uh, voting to repeal those rules. The way the FCC works, for those that don't know, is that based on the rules of the FCC, you have uh, two people appointed from the majority party, two people appointed from the minority party, and one person, the chair, appointed by the president. So, it is, you can have a partisan majority, but it's just a 3 to 2 majority on the FCC. Now, obviously the 2015 decision was a partisan one, but it was a partisan one because the 2010 rules, which had existed before, were largely struck down by the courts. Now, Ajit Pai's decision doesn't go back to those rules. He can't do so because of the court ruling. He did go back to one of the, the one of the parts that wasn't struck down in, to, in in the court ruling, but just the the first, which is that internet companies have to reveal what exactly they're doing, what they're throttling, blocking, all that kind of stuff. When it comes to uh, when it comes to their decision making, but outside of that, they have completely gutted the neutrality rules that they had in place. And not just the 2015 ones, no, the 10, 2010 ones are gone, and the ones before are gone. So the ACLU, I think, had the post saying they're not just going back to 2010. No, they're going back to the dial-up era, uh, and which is, I guess, fairly accurate when it comes to it. What is net neutrality, though? Because some people may not be aware completely of what exactly it does. Net neutrality is the principle that ISPs, internet service providers, cannot decide what is and what isn't acceptable on the internet. They cannot block or throttle speeds depending on the content that you ha uh, you check out on the internet. That all data on the internet is equal. Regardless of the site, regardless of what you're looking at, you have the same speed, you have the same accessibility. Now, net neutrality isn't defined by, say, social media companies censoring things on the internet. That's not what net neutrality is about. It's about ISPs not being able to dick around with uh, the users on the internet or charge sites um, uh, or impose extra fees on sites just because they get more traffic or anything like that. By the way, just because so certain sites get more traffic doesn't mean it actually costs ISP more for, for people to access those sites. That's not exactly how the internet work. it works. It's a bit more complicated than that. But suffice to say, the idea is ISP cannot pick uh, favorites or winners or losers. Now, there is a strong argument to be made on the idea that you shouldn't have social media companies just being able to censor people because that's what they do. That's also what Google do, uh, does. That's what search engines do. They don't have net neutrality. Also, there's an argument to be talked about throttling speeds because you might reach a data cap. That is not covered under net neutrality, but maybe it should. Like, ISPs can slow down your speeds if you uh, if you reach a certain data cap per month. That's actually quite quite a few uh, do. That isn't covered under net neutrality. It was never covered under, covered under net neutrality. Maybe it should. So... Uh, just laying it very clear to people. But Azure Pi calling the net neutrality rules is not a step forward. And point the fact, it's a massive step backwards because for people within the United States, what that means is that AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast are just going to be able to screw them over. Or more likely, they'll use, their, they'll use the power that they now have to be able to decide what is and what isn't acceptable on the internet. And we've seen what companies have done with this power. We've seen what Google, Twitter, Facebook, and others have done with, the with that kind of power. Does anyone trust AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast to do anything different, to be any better than those companies? The answer is no. I understand that a lot of how the internet works right now is because we had very little rules and regulations on the internet, but understand the reality of the internet today that companies, private companies, that used to treat traffic on the internet all the same, and companies that 
weren't too keen on policing content on the internet are now stepping up. So would you rather have the government just go in and say that you can't do that? Or would you just leave it to, to the private corporations? Personally, I don't trust private corporations. And I think that the events over, over the last couple of years, especially on YouTube or, and Twitter, would prove me correct on this issue. But anyway, Ajit Pai's decision, beyond the implications for the internet, beyond the severe damage uh, that said decision of repealing net neutrality can cause, is also a political issue. It shouldn't be a political issue, but it is one. And the reason I say it shouldn't be is, well, let me read an article from The Hill to explain exactly why. Can net neutrality be a potent political issue for Democrats? That's how it starts. But it actually has a great point to it. Democrats see an opportunity to capitalize on the massive backlash to the Federal Communications Commission FCC decision to repeal its net neutrality rules. The repeal sparked a massive outcry from internet users spurred on by celebrities and activists who believe the move will allow internet providers like Comcast and Verizon to control consumers' internet experience, which it would. The question is whether the outrage on red forms can translate into votes for Democratic candidates next fall, given the fact that younger people engaged on the issue are often the least reliable voters, particularly in midterm elections. The Democratic Nationalist Committee Chief Technology Officer said in an interview with The Hill that the massive outcry has been sub a subject of discussion among senior Democratic officials. He said he didn't need to convince DNC officials of the weight that neutrality might hold with voters. And Democratic operatives said that while it's still early in the cycle, they see promise in how younger voters have been moved on by the issue. Net neutrality has the potential to motivate young and progressive voters to turn out, and we certainly welcome their support, as well as all privacy and liber liberty-loving Americans who recognize that the Republican Party has abandoned these fundamental values. The FCC decision has sparked an effort among Democrats to enact legislation blocking the new FCC rules and leaving net neutrality in place. Republicans who control both chambers are countering with a bill that would partially reinstate the rules but allow internet service providers to charge websites for faster speeds and preempt the FCC and state authorities from passing stricter protections. Neither bill is likely to become law, meaning the battle is probably going to move on to the campaign season, and indeed it must because, hey, if you have an issue that you can turn into an electoral issue, you're going to do so, and you're not actually going to try and fix the issue until you win said election. The FCC's rules, meanwhile, will be challenged in court, a process that could lead to a lengthy judicial battle, probably all the way to the Supreme Court. The telecom industry is backing the drive for legislation to replace the FCC's rules, which broadband providers found too onerous. The industry believes it will be better off. It, it doesn't have to deal with the FCC, FCC changing the regulations every time the White House switches parties. And their goal is shared by most Republicans who oppose the neutrality rules backed by former Barack, uh, President Barack Obama is too heavy-handed. They say the rules have hampered innovation investment from telecom providers. Now the table is set for Congress to provide clear permanent rules for a bipartisan legislative solution. Uh, Representative Marsha Blackburn and Greg Walden said in a joint statement after the FCC's vote last week. We hope that all stakeholders and our Democratic colleagues will finally engage in serious negotiations soon. Some Demo Democrats, including Senator Bill Nelson from Florida, the ranking member of the Senate Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee, and Senator Joe Manchin, are on board with the idea of negotiating a compromise on neutrality Republicans. But many Democrats are pushing the nuclear option, which would restore the rules by using a legislative tool called the Congressional Review Act that allows Congress with a simple majority in both chambers and the president's signature to overturn regulatory moves. A CRA bill introduced by Senator Ed Markey from Massachusetts already has at least 27 backers, including Senator Major Minority Leader Charles Schumer, who has promised to force a vote on the bill. On the House side, Representative Mike Doyle plans to introduce a companion bill. Those bills face an uphill battle, but Democrats and activists can use the votes to hold Republicans' feet to the fire and then as a campaign issue. The pro net neutrality group Fight for the Future, which helped rally internet users ahead of the FCC's vote, plans to track members' votes with a legislative scorecard and targets those who don't try to save the rules. Polls are bolstering Democratic hopes. A recent poll out of the University of Maryland's Program for Public Consultation found 83% of registered voters supported keeping the FCC's rules in place. That number included 75% of Republicans, 89% of Democrats, and 86% of Independents. 
Stephen Cole, a pollster who runs the university program, said that Republicans can usually count on support from their base for the, their uh, deregulatory moves, but that was negated by the popularity of the FCC rules. Basically, the public doesn't really buy the idea there's some game for them in it. He believes that neutrality could go hand in hand with Democrats' message that GOP has been giving handouts to the wealthy and powerful, something the party is going all in with its messaging on the tax bill signed into law by President Trump on Friday. Well, here's what I'd have to say. And this is from the perspective of someone who followed the entirety of the 2016 election as well as the 2012 election. And, well, there's the midterms. Politically, it's incredibly stupid for the Republicans in both the House, the Senate, and Trump, yes, Trump, to either not care on this issue while it happens, while Ajapai destroys the neutrality rules, or to support it. Now, Trump himself hasn't said a damn thing on this issue. The White House, I guess, released a statement saying they support the move. But unless it's something from Trump himself, I ain't buying it. You know, just because you have someone in the administration making a decision doesn't mean that's Trump's personal position. He probably doesn't care. He probably has bigger fish to fry. But here's the thing. This is those kind of issues that will rile up a significant number of voters who would show up to vote purely because of this issue. So what's going to happen? Is there going to be a compromise on the issue of net neutrality? My gut tells me no. What's going to happen is that you're going to have Democrats try and pass it, uh, try and push back against the, the, the new rules that the FCC has passed um, using, uh, using that resolution. They only need a simple majority for that. They can repeal any rules and prevent rules of a similar, a similar nature from being put in place. In fact, Republicans use this tool to uh, try to repeal a bunch of regulations that Obama passed uh, on his way out the door. That's what uh, that's what ultimately happened uh, over there, and they did repeal a bunch of regulations. And because of the way they did it, they're preventing from n new such rules or regulations from being put in place, just purely on an executive level. You know, rules and regulations of a similar nature. That's something the Democrats can do, and they probably can get to pass the Senate. Understand they, the Senate is split right now, 51-49. Uh, and you also have Susan Collins, the Republican senator from Maine, supporting the net neutrality rules being opposed to the FCC decision. So you have a 50-50 split in the Senate. Uh, unknown if Susan Collins would support this. Maybe you can get some senators, maybe John McCain, maybe someone like that, uh, who would support... Uh, uh, removing the the uh, reversing the decision that the FCC just made and repealing the net neutrality rules. The House is far more trickier, but it could potentially happen. And w then what occurs after that? Then it goes to Trump. If Trump doesn't take a stand on this, if he thinks he can win on this issue, he's a bloody idiot. If he thinks he can get away with not having a stance on this, he's a bloody idiot. If he, if he refuses to sign that bill, either pocket vetoing it or just outright vetoing it, assuming it even gets to his, uh, to, uh, to his desk, then he's also an idiot. Because he is ignoring a very strong issue that a lot of people do give a damn about. Look, I was on the Donald. I frequent the Donald, the Reddit uh, for Trump supporters. And there was this massive band wave that uh, the moderators engaged in because so many people weren't buying the bullshit that Ajit Pai was trying to sell. And it is bullshit. Look, I'm very angry at what social media companies I'm, are doing. I'm angry at Google, Facebook, Twitter. I say this as a YouTuber, I think it is a bunch of horseshit. But destroying net neutrality by this Verizon puppet, by McConnell's bitch boy in the FCC, because that's who ultimately appointed Ajit Pai to the FCC in the first place. Not Obama, not Trump. Mitch McConnell and and Ajit Pai is Verizon's boy. He is there. He worked for them. He is there to do their bidding, and it's very clear. He doesn't even give a damn about how the FCC is supposed to work, which is why that lawsuit that's targeting the FCC decision might actually end up working. But I'm going to assume it doesn't work ultimately, or it takes too long, and in the end, you're going to have a legislative solution. But a legislative solution, at the very least, would be weaker unless the Democrats succeed in uh, overturning the FCC decision. They might, they might not. That depends on Trump. He would be a fool not to support the neutrality. It would bite him in the ass pretty hard. Look, millennial voters, younger voters, people who are very um, 
who are very invested in the internet are not people who typically show up to vote. In fact, younger voters, for all the discussions talked about how younger voters are important, they aren't. Typically, they aren't, unless they're riled up. That's because younger voters, as noted by that article on the Hill, are the most unreliable of all voters. But if you get them riled up, if you get them coming out in record numbers because of an issue like this, and yes, some, something like net neutrality would get a large number of people out to vote, it's not even something the Democrats have to campaign on. People would take notice. A lot of people do care about this issue, like it or not. Like it or not, you can live in whatever fantasy world you you want to. You can be like Ash at Pie, apparently, where 75% of Republicans support net neutrality, where 83% of voters support net neutrality. Yeah, good luck winning that political battle. It's an insane one to fight in the first place. So, you know, the the push to repeal Obamacare failed because it was widely unpopular. I cannot imagine that the push, th that what Ajit Pai did at the FCC is something that's going to be permanent. Mind you, it would have actually been a pretty bad situation if he had just kept the rules. Because he was already not enforcing said rules. You know, that's the thing about l rules and regulations and laws. Someone actually needs to enforce those. And Ajit Pai clearly wasn't doing that. Hell, Tom Wheeler really wasn't doing that. Uh, to begin with, and Ajit Pai just made it worse. So now, uh, now, now, what's going to happen? What's what's my expectation on this? Well, let me put it like this: either Republicans and Trump fix the fucking issue, or they're going to be wiped out in 2018. They might believe whatever they want about tax reform. That's not going to be enough in its own. More, uh, I have more to discuss on that issue, but it is probably going to be a net benefit what they did with taxes, regardless of what people might believe, regardless of the nonsense that the Democrats are spewing and even what's being said in that article. <laughs> but that article is not really there to say, oh, taxes, the tax bill they pass is certainly going to bite them in the ass. It's unlikely to, to bite them in the ass. And obviously, they're going to do an infrastructure push in 2018. But if you really just want to piss off a lot of voters in an election year where it's actually going to matter, yeah, don't do stuff like this. It's stupid, it's pointless, and, and ultimately it's not going to be a lasting decision. But Ajapai did it anyway, because he doesn't give a fuck. And because, hey, let's burn it all down. Well, you're not going to be FCC chair for a very long time, buddy. That's, that's, that's what I can say, at least. Kostin here on Serious Gaming signing out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more.